When a camera company the size of Sony offers you to review one of their flagship cameras, naturally, my only answer to that is an astounding yes, please. So today I have with me the Sony a7S III paired with a 24mm 1.4G master lens. And at the time, I received the unit, which is a little over a month ago, Malaysia went into their second lockdown. So I was definitely kind of gutted. But anyway, it turned out well, as instead of having this camera for a mere week, like most of the review units I get, I literally had it for a good month. And suffice to say, I pretty much got the opportunity to really experience what it's like using this video centric beast from Sony long term ish. Again, as you guys know, my reviews are not going to be a scientific one. And it's merely me sharing my personal experience using the camera on a day to day basis. So if that does tick your boxes, then yeah, I guess this review is for you. Anyway, just as a disclaimer, this camera was loaned to me by Sony Malaysia, and I'm definitely not sponsored by them. So everything I say will pretty much be my honest opinion on the camera based on my personal experiences using it. Okay, so let's first talk about the camera's build quality. Well, what can I say? It is a flagship camera. And to be really honest with you, it is what I've come to expect from most of Sony's flagship cameras build quality. It definitely feels well built. If there's a small qualm I may have, it would definitely be the LCD screen, which does feel a little bit flimsy and kind of small. But I guess we will talk about the LCD screen a little bit later in this review. Anyway, all the knobs and dials work well and are fitted well and felt really robust. So I don't have any real complaints when it comes to the build quality. Also, this has to be the best hand grip on any Sony cameras I have ever used so far. By the way, this camera is fully weather sealed, so you're definitely not going to have to worry about it getting in the rain or anything like that, because you're definitely covered in that department. As for the 24mm 1.4G master lens, the build quality is definitely also what I've come to expect from any premium Sony G master lenses. It's very well made and it's weather sealed too. If there was any real complaint, I guess, would be the fact that when you put the lens to manual aperture, the the ring was kind of sticky to rotate, even when it was on D-click mode. So I'm assuming it might just be the copy I had with me. But anyway, I just thought of mentioning it, I guess. This camera can shoot photos at a maximum resolution of only 12.1 megapixels. However, the reason why this camera has such a low megapixel count is because it is more focused for shooting videos with. With the lower megapixels, it ensures that this camera has almost a one-to-one -one pixel count in 4K and this lower pixel count also ensures that the camera has superb signal to noise ratio, especially in poorly lit scenes. Also, the lower pixel count means there is less processing for the sensor during recording. And this also ensures that the camera does not overheat that quickly. Unlike some cameras we know. Hmm. The ISO range of this camera is from 40 all the way up to 409,600. In terms of video recording, it can record in 4K up to a maximum of 120 frames a second. It also also is able to record at all frame rates in 10-bit 422 all eye compression. However, be warned that 422 H265 codec is horrendous to edit in and will literally cripple any computer you throw at it. Unless, of course, you are using Apple's new M1 silicon computers to edit in. By the way, if you have an Atomos Ninja 5, this camera can output full 14-bit RAW from its HDMI port and it can be recorded as a ProRes RAW file onto the Atomos Ninja which brings me to one of the points that I love so much about this camera. And that has to be the fact that this camera has a full HDMI port. I can't tell you how many times I've managed to accidentally break a micro HDMI port. So this new full size port is definitely a warm welcome and I love it. Okay, in terms of video compression, this camera records in XAVCS and these are the compressions it comes with. This camera comes with Sony's fast hybrid AF with 759 faces section AF points and enhanced real-time IAF. And the AF performance is definitely astounding in this camera. One of the highlights of this camera has to be its viewfinder. It has the highest resolution EVF of any viewfinder out there at the moment at 9.4 million dots. Looking through it is definitely wonderful and it was really easy to pull focus to really fine tune focusing spots as there was plenty of resolving resolution.
resolution to see clearly. As for the LCD, it is a fully articulating 2.95 inch screen with a resolution of 1.44 million dots and it is touch capable too. Menus now can also be browsed using the touch screen feature which is really great as before this all Sony's only supported tap to focus and you can't use the touch features while browsing through the menus like Canon cameras can. Also worth noting is that this is the first Sony camera to come with their new menu system which is in my opinion way better than the older one. The a7S III also comes with IBIS however I found it not to be as stabilized as the EOS R5's IBIS but I would still have an IBIS over not having one at all. In terms of media this camera does support UHS-2 SD cards and also the newer Type A CF Express card. However, the CF Express Type A cards are quite hard to find and they aren't cheap at all. The slots where you slot in the cards is also very well engineered as it shares the same slot space. However, you can only slot one type of card at a time in each slot and you can't use all four slots at a time. It would have been great if you could use all four slots at a time, but I guess that would be asking way too much. Okay, so now let's talk about the usability and my experience using this camera. Being a Canon EOS R5 owner myself, I actually found using this camera to be one of the best Sony cameras camera experience I have ever had to be really honest with you. As before this the only Sony camera that I actually owned was the A6500 and it was okay but it isn't as pleasant as the experience I had with the A7S III. In general the camera was pretty easy to use and not too difficult too and the buttons and dial layouts are well placed but coming from a Canon ecosystem there were definitely times that I did get the aperture setting dials mixed up between them. Okay, so now let's talk about the LCD. Well, to me, I felt the LCD is perhaps the biggest part of this camera that I really feel let it down. It isn't big at all and it's not easy to see in bright outdoors. But even more frustrating is the fact that when you record video, the recording window makes the video even more smaller and to me that isn't good at all. As it is, the screen is already small. So I'm definitely not a fan of this screen. Also, the touch responsiveness is nowhere near the responsiveness of a Canon touch screen but that being said it isn't awful but it's just that I felt that the Canon ones is way more responsive. I feel that where this camera really shines is definitely its autofocus. In terms of autofocus I felt this camera was just sublime. I love the way it racks focus on subjects nice and smoothly and the fact that you can even choose the focus racking speed is just so useful. I also found that the focus tracking to be far more superior in some instances than even the EOS R5 as I found it didn't rack out of focus from a track subject subject as quickly as the EOS R5 did. But I'm sure it's definitely a settings issue and I'm sure there is a work around it. In this example here you can see that the EOS R5 does focus to the background the minute the subject leaves the frame and the Sony somehow didn't do that and it kept on focusing to the track subject a bit longer and I kind of like that. In terms of low light performance, this camera is just amazing. The camera just performs so well in low light. In fact, it's so good that I could even shoot 120 frames a second slow motion even at night without having to worry too much about the noise that it produces. So how about the photos this camera can take? Well, I found that the photos that this camera was able to capture was definitely decent enough and if you are using it as a photo camera to enlarge stuff, you probably can get away with it. But don't expect it to perform like a typical high resolution stills camera would. It just isn't that kind of camera. However, if you do want to use it for social media and light photography work that doesn't really require cropping in, then this camera is definitely decent enough in my opinion. Oh yeah, before I forget, if there's one thing that I did not enjoy about this camera was whenever I plugged in the Atomos Ninja 5, the LCD wasn't able to switch on. So I wasn't able to tap to focus whenever I got the Atomos Ninja 5 plugged in. So I don't know if there's something I'm missing here in terms of settings, but do leave me a comment down below if you guys know a workaround for this. Because the EOS R5 still allowed me to see the LCD screen and still use the tap to focus feature even if the Atomos Ninja 5 was connected to it and I found that so useful. Okay, so what's my conclusion? After playing with this camera for a bit now, who do I think should really get this camera? Well, to me, it really boils down to what you are shooting. If you are someone who shoots mainly videos and you do long form video content too, then this camera is definitely a no brainer. For its 4K video, it's simply the best in its class in my opinion. However, if you are really a hybrid shooter and you do need that extra oomph in your photos too, then somehow I think you are better off getting something like an EOS R5 or even the Sony A1 for that matter. However, with the EOS R5, you definitely have to bear in mind if you are doing long form videos, you may have that heat issue thing. But to be honest with you, 
YouTube. After owning it for about six months, I never really quite overheated my camera to the point it literally shut down on me. So yeah, you're pretty safe still with the EOS R5. Also, I feel that this camera is so well suited for people who do shoot in low light conditions. This is just amazing for low light. If you want to be shooting documentaries on the fly, sort of like run and gun, this is definitely the camera for you. Another warm welcome to this camera is also the new color sign Sony has introduced in this camera. It is perhaps the best color science I've ever seen in any Sony camera so far. And it's really nice to see that Sony is definitely stepping up in the color science department, but it still isn't a Canon killer in terms of color science, in my opinion. I also found that color grading the A7S III footage is way easier than all the Sony's I used to color grade. Right then, I hope you found this quick review useful. If you did, please don't forget to give me a like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.